All right, guys, about to take the Skeeter down to Texas. First time I've ever done this. It'll probably be the longest trip that I've ever taken, towing my boat all the way to go fishing somewhere. Going to be producing a lot of content, so stay tuned for that. Click that subscribe button down below. Got to get in here right now, though, and make sure I've got everything kind of squared away uh, for this long trip. You know, as a YouTuber, I've got more camera gear that I have to take care of. You know, and one of the things I did last year with buying my boat process was I said, hey, you need to get one of these. This is just a simple thing you need to have. Um, I'm going to go around, start checking all of my uh, my tires, especially a spare tire. You don't want to get out there, have a flat and then have a flat spare tire. So I got to do that. Um, most everything in the boats are there, already uh, ready to go, but uh you know somebody had commented that my power pole is crooked and you can kind of see that it is a little close here between the motor and the power pole and it did come around this other side over here and kind of notice that you know it had kind of moved a little bit it is one of those things that you should keep in mind if you get one of these black powder coated jack plates that some of these things could very well move so you have to pay really good attention so i'm going to take the uh, wrench start torquing those down and you know we'll see what else we can do uh one of the things that my fx20 came with that my zx250 didn't come with was a cover so i'm gonna cover my baby up and uh you know what we're gonna get on the road it's pretty cold here in uh, maryland right now looking forward to some hopefully warmer weather in texas uh looks like it should be a little bit warmer but let's uh let's get after doing some of these things that we need to get done Woo. all right got the old got the old wrench set here it's actually something i'm gonna make sure that i, I take with me all the way down to texas i don't have one on the boat that i keep with me so I'm gonna take this one, take this one in the back of the truck down in Texas. Gotta figure out what's gotta figure out what size these things are though first. So it's definitely smaller than that. Very, very complicated high-tech system to figure these things out. There you go. I wish I had another one. <clears throat> Got one of these bad boys too. Adjust it. Me. You know, that is actually one of the things that when I was buying a boat, I didn't quite understand. So when you're considering a shallow anchor system, I have no relationship with power pole or anything, but I can tell you that for the most part, the thing, the only things that you need to work on power pole are right here in my hands. Uh, with some of the other systems out there, they're not going to be as easy to maintain from my experience and from what I've heard. For the most part, this is what you need to be able to tighten certain points of the power pole system down. And other than that, you just gotta get some hydraulic fluid, keep her, keep her uh, filled up and ready to go. I think I've decided I'm just gonna go ahead and take this ladder system off. All right, guys, got this uh, power pole straightened out and everything, getting ready, like I said, for the drive. Um, definitely want to have the jack plate when you're when you're driving, kind of kind of up. You know, you don't want to have it all the way down so that the motor's hanging low on the jack plate or anything like that. Next is I'm gonna kind of look at the rest of these bolts that are on the jack plate, simply because, again, like I said, this is a powder coated jack plate and that's just one of the issues that you can run into is just that they they move it looks good though i like that it's all black you know some of that powder coating can chip and that can create some movement so let's uh let's do the rest of this then got a little bit of extra torque out of that one we'll move down here to the bottom <clears throat> and you know one of the things people always ask me about like oh you know you went all the way out to kentucky to weedas marine over there in kentucky to buy your boat you know why not buy it locally and have that person who can do all this most of the stuff on this boat unless it is a fiberglass issue like a true like you know there's something wrong with a fiberglass you can get it done locally 
The trailer is an all Skeeter trailer built by Skeeter. You can only get parts from it by Skeeter, but you can call your dealer up and have them ship the, the parts to a trailer repair or an authorized trailer repair place. It doesn't even have to be an authorized trailer repair place. Uh, so long as you have that, you can always reach back to your dealer, get them to ship the parts to the person in your state to work on like the trailer. Uh, other than, like I said, an internal defect to maybe the fiberglass, you can't get that handled by a local dealer or you can, but they'll, it'll take some time. They might give their, their customers preference, but you know, your electronics, like your hummingbirds, your Minn Kota's, your on bank charger, all of those things are covered by warranty. So that's really just you dealing with the manufacturer of that piece of equipment. When you buy brand new, you got warranties on all that stuff. I've already had to send my hummingbird unit back and, and I've just gotten it back. So that's, uh, that's why I'm not afraid to buy a boat out of state. And that's kind of why I went to Weedas Marine. That's one of the reasons why I wasn't afraid to go to Weeds Marine. I actually did find one of my uh, bolts. I actually needed some a, a good more than a quarter turn uh, to tighten it down. So this is important work if you're going out on a long trip or even short trips, just maintaining your boat in the meantime between events. All right, final adjustments here. Got a good little turn out of that one. Yeah, some good, some more good turns out of this one right here. I mean, these things, I'm assuming that this connection point of the power pole to the little arm that comes off of the jack plate really needs to be cinched down pretty good. Uh, you're talking about these are the points. Yeah, this thing's holding, you know, 2,000 pound plus piece of equipment and current and all kinds of stuff. So, I'm assuming this part has to be really good, good and cinched down. Try not, try not scrape enough. Trying to think. Just kind of working, working my way around. Get over here and check these tires. This ain't the best, but we're going through it and just trying to take you guys along for what we need to do here. Now the ratings are going to be on the side of the tire. Most time, I think it's about 50 PSI. But let me check that and get right back to you. There. All right, yeah, so that's what I just said was, yeah, 50 PSI, and that's exactly what we should have. We've been having cold weather here recently, so, you know, I expect to see anywhere from 40 on up to 50. We'll see what happens. That was not a good run at it. Yeah, right there at 40. Yep. That was a good one, right at 40. That one's at 39. Essentially the synopsis is we gotta we gotta put some air in these tires, so let's do that. Luckily my uh, air compressor's already fired up from doing some household trim work, but let's get her uh, let's get her filled up here. I like the accuracy of this gauge more. Well, let me do it like that. All right, yeah, so that little bit right there took it all the way up to almost almost 50 exactly. I was thinking how funny it'd be in NASCAR, but we'll be taking them turns on the corners that were really good. You know, that's what it took a little 45 in the left one, 450 on the right one that got her evened out right smooth. I'm gonna do this to the exact, exact same thing to the other side just to get ready to go and cannot ever forget the spare. Let's check to see what the uh, air pressure is on this bad boy right here. Yeah, he feels pretty full, but otherwise, um, oh, since I haven't ran my boat, you know what, I was like, man, when I go take my boat to Texas, I'll probably have to do an oil change while I'm down there. Because let me tell you guys, you do not want to let that first oil change go by without doing it. I mean, especially the lower end unit, the gear unit, uh, overall the oil. I just remembered that Yamaha actually sent me the, the stuff to do an oil change. So, Check it out right there. I've got basically everything I need in an oil change kit from Yamaha uh, to conduct my oil change on the road. So pretty cool. I'm gonna make sure I, I get my uh, siphoning tool to siphon all the oil out for when I uh, go to change my oil. But that's pretty cool that I already got everything that I need here. O-rings, filter, 
awesome. Thank you Yamaha for doing that. And they did that because, you know, I made a video about doing my oil change, you know, myself because it's really simple to do. Great part about owning a Yamaha motor. I'm not affiliated with Yamaha in any, more, any means other than I love my motor. Probably the only motor I'll ever need, ever use. So, right there. All right, so it's basically set just right up where all the other ones are at. Put some more oil in there, more oil. <laughs> Put some more air in this thing. All right, like I said, put my covers on for my power pole. Power poles here. I actually bought these. These actually cover my power pole twos on my old boat. Uh, somebody local in Maryland actually makes them. Uh, I got them off of eBay, but it's really good high quality it's not a neoprene uh, material but it's good high quality good good straps on there uh, and just you know I got two for like 80 bucks or so but like I said very high marine type of uh, leather or I don't know what that material is but very sturdy just like some of the travel covers that you can get because not all covers are meant to travel and carry your boats long distances a matter of fact, some of the covers that you can get for the Yamaha motor, I wouldn't actually recommend because even the ones that have the vents, some don't have vents, some do have vents. Uh, but the ones on my last one kind of scuffed my motor up a little bit. And uh, you know, I really found that I didn't need it. Uh, next but not least, guys, is make sure you have a tire iron that works for the trailer. Not all truck tire irons will work for your trailer and same with the jacks. Not all jacks will jack your trailer up high enough. Um, hopefully my, <laughs> I'm saying hopefully, but not, if not, I've got a spare jack that I carry with me uh, in the back of my truck. But hopefully my, my one for my Dodge 3500 should be able to jack it up high enough. It's, it needs to be rated for a, you know over 10,000 pound vehicle. So I'm, I'm gonna just assume that it's uh, that it'll work i'll probably lay eyes on it here in a little bit uh, just to make sure but other than that have your own tire iron to make sure that you can take the lug nuts off of the trailer because they don't necessarily work between the truck and the trailer other than that guys that's that's it for this uh video you know next video is going to be basically a, a travel vlog uh, gonna probably be staying overnight freezing to death in my truck as i travel down to, to texas because too cheap to buy a hotel room and uh, but you know that's what this channel has always been about guys it's, it's always been about you and me growing as anglers together you know sharing the things that i learned sharing my experiences watching somebody go from zero to hopefully hero at some point in time but just going through the process i think there's so many people out there that portray the knowledge that they have when it's just knowledge that they either read or just looked up real fast and did a video on and because i'm so brand new to this I don't want to convey things like that. I try to convey the things that I learn and that I do and the mistakes that I make along the way so that you can learn from those mistakes as well. You can see like, oh, that was kind of stupid that he did that or, oh, that tire iron thing. Man, I didn't even know that. Oh, that's cool to see him check out the things on his boat before he gets to go on this long trip. You know, I should definitely be doing that. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Stay tuned, gonna be doing a lot of winter fishing coming up. Y'all have a good one.